Let's look at some of the ways that you can start optimizing your pages and posts using Yoast and the kind of things that you should be adding into these fields that you're seeing here because these are the things that bamboozle lots of people like what do you add as your key phrase and then how do you run it through the title, the meta description and what are these other fields that you should be filling out and ultimately how do you get this to turn green if you want to. But first off, I want to start by showing you what this looks like in Google because this is the ultimate aim. What we're wanting to do is make sure that we are seeing how this is reflected in the search results in Google when we add it in. So if I come over here, I've um, run a search for Brilliant 404 Pages and this is my post that shows up that we were just looking at just now. So we can see We've got the name of the website, we have the URL for the actual post itself, we have the title of the blog post, and down here we have something called the meta description. Now really interestingly, this is not the meta description that I have added into Yoast, and the reason for that is because Google will sometimes add its own information in here, thinking that it's better than what we have added, and ultimately it wants to make these listings as clickable as possible because it, it wants these rankings and these um, these listings that it's putting in front of people to be the most useful and relevant that they possibly can be. So what I want you to keep in mind is that when we rank on Google, it's not enough to simply show up on the page. These need to be clickable and then we need to be enticing people to actually go to the page or the post and have a look. That's what Google is wanting to do. So it is wanting to drive more traffic to our posts and pages, we just need to make it straightforward for it to understand what our posts and pages are actually about. And that's how Yoast can really, really help us. So if you're not familiar with Yoast, um, it's a, a free plugin, it's freemium, which means that you can use the free version or you can upgrade to the premium version of it if you want to. I use the free version, I always have. Um, and it works fine. What we need to keep in mind is that Yoast is just a tool. It's not gonna guarantee that our posts or pages then show up on Google. We need to do a lot more than that. There's a, a huge amount that goes into ranking highly on Google. But this is a really good way for us to focus our mind and make sure that our pages and posts are optimized. So here we have um, just a normal blog post. It actually doesn't have a huge amount of text. I wrote it a long time ago, um, but I want to show you these areas here. So your focus key phrase is what you think people might be looking for when they're searching for things on Google. And keyword research is a whole other topic I'll do in another video another time. But you want to make sure that this focus key phrase is something that isn't really, really drilled down and specific just to you because it needs to be something that people are likely to be searching for. And you also want to make it obviously very relevant to the topic of the post or, or page that you have written. So in here, I've got brilliant 404 pages. If I had just put 404, it would have been way too broad or if I put error pages, that's also probably too broad. So you want to make sure that it's slightly longer, long enough for you not to um, be falling into a pool of really, really competitive keywords. Um, so it's specific enough but it's also not drilled down, so it's so granular that it's only relevant to you, that people will actually be searching on these kind of terms. So we can see that um, Yoast gives us a preview of how it's gonna show up on Google, which is really, really great. So this is obviously generated from the information that we put down here, so it's not always totally accurate, but it's a really good guide for us. So here we can preview it as the mobile result, or here we can preview it as a desktop result. Now there is a little bit of, um, of difference here between what we saw on Google and what we're seeing here. And I'll highlight those in a moment. Um, the SEO title, so it's interesting, I wrote this post years ago and um, normally now I would always change these. So these are what we call variables, they're dynamically added in here. Um, so it pulls in the, um, the title of your post or your page and it puts in, it usually puts in a separator, which is like a bar, and then your site title. So for me, that would be the website mentor. So these are dynamically added. Um, <clears throat> but when I look over on here, you'll see it's all it's done actually is add the title, which is quite unusual. So what I would have expected is the title and then a separator and then the website mentor, but it hasn't added that on here. 
I'm not going to mess with it because this page is doing okay. Um, so then what I would do is add a slug. So the slug is the end of the web address. So you can choose what this slug is going to be. And ideally, it would reflect your focus key phrase that you've chosen up here. So for me, you can see it's a direct duplicate of it. Your slug can't have spaces in it. So just divide up the, um, the, the words with hyphens in the way that I have done here. And you can see that when we, um, when we look here, you can see that the actual URL here, this part here is the slug, brilliant 404 pages. And then we have the meta description. This is what we're adding in to make it clickable. So you want to add something that feels a little bit compelling and um, is going to make people want to go and visit the post or the page and read more about it themselves. Now this is where it gets interesting because here I've written a little bit of information but Google has chosen some information from the actual post itself and has added that here in the description. So we don't always have complete control. Now the thing I don't like about this is that it's added the three dots because it's too long for it to show the whole thing that it's wanting to add. And that's why Yoast gives us these um, indicators here. So if I was to add some more information in here, you can see that it turns orange. That's an indicator that I've added too many words. So once I take that out, it's green again. So we want to make sure that we're keeping it on green. It's not definitive. It's not definitely always correct. So Yoast doesn't always have the character length exactly right, but it's a good guide for us. It's better than we would probably do on our own. And really that's all that there is to it. This then will um, give us the opportunity to show up on Google in the way that we want to with some control. Now, you can see underneath we have SEO analysis and sometimes this might be closed so you might need to just click on this drop down here and it will give us um, red, amber and green indicators of the problems and what we could improve and what we've done well. So here you can see that um, my key phrase isn't appearing in the first paragraph. So if I did that, it would most likely be enough to turn it green for me. Um, I don't have enough key phrases in there. So the key phrase, which is this here, brilliant 404 pages, is only showing up once in the entire body of the text that I have written. Now this is an easy fix, and any one of these might be enough to just turn this little amber face to a green one. Um, so over here we have, it wants key phrases in the subheadings. So your subheadings are like your H2s and your H3s um, in, your, in, um, in your post. I could also have um, alt attributes. So I could add in alt titles onto my images, which also have the key phrase in them. And um, it's telling me that I haven't front loaded the keyword or the key phrase in the SEO title. So the SEO title is here. Now I haven't even added an SEO title and maybe I will, I'll show you exactly how I would do that. So here I would just take out these, these um, lozenges that are added as the variables and I could put brilliant 404 pages, get some inspiration for your error pages. Now you can see that this is still green. So hopefully this title will carry on showing up if I carried on adding some more, you can see it's turned red. So I want to get rid of that. So you want to make sure you're keeping it green. Once you've made any changes, you need to go ahead and hit save. But I want to make another change. Let me just see. So that was enough to make this turn green. So um, the reason for that is because I have front loaded this SEO title and I've customized it. And that was all it took. What I was actually going to do was I was going to go and add in um, an extra um, an extra sentence in here with the key phrase in. Let me just see if I can um, add something in here. So let me just grab this. And then when I come down and we'll see that we've got fewer of these problems now are showing up and it's it, we now only have one improvement because we added in that front-loaded title 
And also I've added in um, an extra um, instance of the key phrase, which means that the density is, is okay. So if I look down now, um, it might tell me that I've done okay. So here, the key phrase was found two times, which is great. So it's happy with that. Previously, it was only found once, and that was why it brought it up as a problem. So once you've done that, I can click on save. When I go back to Google, don't expect those changes to be reflected here instantly. They won't be. They might take days, weeks, sometimes they might only take hours. Um, but a good idea is to go to your Google Search Console and resubmit this page if you want to make sure that it's, um, the, the changes are listed straight away. Now, what I want to say about, um, about Yoast as well is keep in mind that it is just a tool. So this is a, a robot of kinds. It's trawling your content and it's giving you inspiration as to what you might be able to change to improve the visibility of your pages on Google. It is no guarantee that your pages are going to rank on Google. It has no influence over that. And also, I see people really agonizing over turning this from red to amber to green. So you don't necessarily need a smiley face. And I would say always the most important thing is that you're writing your blog post or your page for human beings, the people who are actually visiting your page and who might become clients. You're not writing your page and the content for it for robots and tools like Yoast. So please keep that in mind when you're writing these, when you're writing all of the titles and the meta description and when you're going through these ana this analysis and changing content within the actual body of your post please keep in mind that it still needs to make sense and i see this especially when people do keyword research and they will follow the keywords exactly because they will add those keywords into the focus key phrase and they might not be grammatically correct so it might be that they're missing a certain letter so it might say something like, um, um, I'm just trying to think of an example of what it might be, but it might feel stilted in terms of the grammar. And you don't want to be adding grammatically incorrect text into your post just to please Yoast. It's simply not worth it. Your pages should read and flow conversationally and for real people, not for machines. So please keep that in mind and make sure that you're not trying to hack things around so much that it feels awkward and that the language doesn't flow anymore. Okay, I hope that's really useful. I hope that's going to give you a good, um, a good head start with filling out these areas on Yoast. By the way, Yoast for me is appearing underneath the text of my um, blog post, but sometimes it might appear for you over in the right hand column and you might be using something like rank math or a different tool but the principles remain the same so keep it in mind doesn't matter what you're using I've shown you how to do this on Yoast um, but there are a lot of other SEO tools out there that are going to help you optimize your pages in a similar way um, and the variables and the fields that you're going to fill out will be similar okay that's it please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it do give me a follow and look out for my next video, which I'll do about keyword research.